closer and closer, just like at the, uh, the live in-person class, I, I usually hold off on, uh, on officially starting until we are exactly at that time. And so that will uh, be two more minutes. So we've got a two minute warning here as, uh, as far as we go. Uh, one thing you wanna check out for yourself is that where you're going to be doing uh, your, your yoga, that your arms can go outward and upward and backward without colliding with anything. You've got space for your yoga mat. And, uh, as long as you can see the video of me, that, uh, that will work the best. If, uh, if you're in a situation and, uh, and you, you know, the camera's not you know, on where you are exactly, that's probably gonna be fine. And you can even stop having the, uh, the video feed if you, uh, if you want that. But we're just, uh, we'll proceed forward here. Uh, just one more minute uh, that we'll get going. And we'll just see, fingers crossed, that this is going to work for us. I see several you, other people. you still get, get to go to Dallas and all this? Uh, right now, I'm not. I'm doing what uh, they're recommending. I'm not, uh, I'm not interacting with, with people uh, any more than absolutely necessary because, again, we're just trying to you know, push down that, uh, that peak so that uh, we don't have any greater transmission uh, right. at, this, at this time. So I'm... Uh, I'm following through and I'm, I'm uh, you know, isolating just like uh, everyone else I hope is, uh, is using our best practices. Oh yeah, the screen's all filling up. So some of you I can see uh, in the screen and, and some of you are there. Um, so as we're just about to get started, I wanna welcome everyone to my very first live stream, which means of course, there's gonna be all sorts of an anticipated problems. And uh, I'm live streaming on the platform of Zoom as, uh, as well on YouTube and so, Hopefully, this uh, this will go forward and uh, and we'll get something usable. And at the end of it all, we'll have a chance to chat just a little bit more. So uh, we'll uh, we'll get started. So if you uh, if you feel like doing it, um, I invite you to come up into a standing position. So standing uh, with your feet about hip distance wide. So we'll start standing. We'll do, let's get ourselves started. Let's start to loosen up a little bit. So stand with those feet hip distance and just begin to let your arms swing back and forth a bit. Let yourself spin back and forth. And what you're going to notice about this action as you begin to do it is that it begins to loosen you up slightly, but it also begins to let you know of the areas of your body that are tight. up a little bit that way. We check out, we find out what our body's telling us, the information that our body's letting us know. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lift up our arms from the top and let the arms come down. So we're going to create an up and down action with our arms. And you're going to feel that a little differently. And if you're alerted to things about your body that are, that are feeling a little uncomfortable, pay attention to that. It's okay to uh, make tight things loosen. It's okay to stretch. It's okay to feel tired from doing things. But it's not okay for us to push into discomfort in our body. And let's do this. Let the knees go soft. So soften those knees a bit and work to bring your weight back toward your heels, letting the front of your foot lift up until you lose your balance a little bit. And then take the weight toward the toes bending your knees a little bit. And we're gonna go back and forth like that. Weight back and weight forward. Back and forth we go. So losing the balance might make us wanna lock our knees. Instead, let's bend our knees a little bit more. Now put one foot forward a bit. All right, so one foot goes forward and then travel toward your toes and back toward your heels. So back and forth. So you're losing your balance a little bit that way. Back and forth. So we lose our balance, bend the knees just a little bit more so that you restore order. You lower that center of gravity a bit. Good. Now let's uh, put the other foot in the forward position and we'll go back and forth. And each time we lose our balance a little bit, we will just sort of crouch 
so that we maintain that balance, so that we uh, recover that balance. Good. All right, but one thing about balance is making sure that the ankle is steady and ready. And so as we stand, staying comfortable, I want you to let weight come toward the inner edges of your feet enough to lift up the outer edge of your foot. And then let that weight travel to the outer edge of your foot enough to lift up the inner edges of your feet. And so you're going back and forth like that, lifting up inner and outer edges of your feet. And it's like we're shifting our, our ankle bones. It's not the weight, it's... Right. Balance that weight across the ball of the foot. So that from the big to the little toe, you have an even weight. Put the weight into the center of your heel and push your heels away from each other. You're gonna feel the arch of your foot uplift when you do that. And then allow that to relax. And you can even look down and see that as you keep the weight across the ball of the foot and push your heels outward, the arch of the foot will lift up. Just go ahead and lift your toes up from that too. Toes lifting. And then I need to lift the glass back in the air. And then down. Toes lift up, fingers pull back, and toes squeeze down. And I want you to take those fingers and bring them into the top part where the finger joins into the palm. And so we go back and forth like that. And that's an unusual action for us. So back and forth we go. But then let's do this. Let's spread apart those fingers and those toes. Keep your heels pressed outward. And then squeeze fingers and toes tightly together. Now you may find that your toes are not obeying you yet. But we keep working with it and we're going to get better and better response. Now let's try this. Let's see if we can move our big toes towards each other. Big toes traveling towards one another. And then let's push down the big toe, push the heels outward and lift the small toes up and down. Now let those small toes go down and lift just the big toe up and down. Now let's try our extra credit with it. The biggest toe down, the littlest toe down, the three center toes working to lift up and down. And remember, that's just about practice. How much we try and do something is what our body begins to respond to. But now we've, uh, we've corrected that arch a bit, so let's stand with our more improved arch. The hips are back, our chest is lifting up, our shoulders are back, our shoulders are down, the chin is level, and when we breathe in, the arms come slowly forward and up. And when we exhale, those arms spread slowly out and down. And we're gonna do that again. Deep inhale, try and fill up. And slow exhale. Let your arms stretch comfortably, inhale, and exhale. And then we're going to take our arms to one side. We're going to breathe in, lifting up the side, and exhale, coming down the other side. And you'll feel different in your neck, your upper, and your lower back, too. Breathe in and breathe out. Now we're going to try it the other way. We're going to inhale and lift. Exhale, coming across and then down. And again, breathe in and out. Good. Now keep breathing beautifully, but let the arms rise. You're gonna lift up through the center. You're gonna lift up the side of your chest. You're gonna stretch your arms slowly up and inhale, reaching up. Exhale, let that release. So we're gonna do it again. Lift up the center, lift up the side, reach the arms, stretch up and inhale. And exhale, we'll let that go. And we'll do it again. Center lift, the side lift, the arm reaches and stretches. We inhale, exhale, release. We almost never reach our full height. Lengthen again, lift the center, lift the side, stretch that arm and inhale. And then exhale, we're gonna let the arms come all the way down. Now take your hands and interlink the fingers. Press those palms up, stretch those hands. Now we're gonna bring the arms up comfortably. We're gonna lift the chest and begin to spiral from the legs, hips and shoulders and arms. We'll spiral and inhale, and then exhale, come out of that spiral. We'll do it again, we'll upward lift, and we'll spiral from the legs all the way up through the hands. Inhale, and then exhale, we'll come out of the spiral. And now we're gonna lengthen, we're gonna lift the chest, 
We're going to lift the arms. We're going to reach up and inhale and arch. And then exhale, let those arms just come down. Let it swing again. Swing those arms comfortably. But now let's bring up the chest and pull the shoulder blades back together. If you can, link your hands together. Do so and reach those arms back. Exhale. And then let the arms go forward, broaden between the shoulder blades. Take a deep inhale. We're going to reach and we're going to squeeze back. We exhale. Forward shoulders, inhale. And again, the reach, the squeeze back, the exhale. And now those arms relax down and apart. Spread your feet out. And then begin to turn your body again. All the way. Legs up through the chest. Everything just twisting. You may feel a little different than at the beginning of our class. Your body's already beginning to loosen. But now let's isolate. In the isolation, we'll get to deeper muscles. We're going to uplift. And without turning the hips, we're going to work to turn our shoulders. Keep breathing deeply. Keep the upward lift. We uplift and we turn our shoulders. So back and forth we go. Try not to move what's below the waist. Try to move only above the waist. And you may feel that as a deeper action. But now let's uplift. And we're going to pivot the pelvis without moving the chest. And it may be more difficult than other actions, but we're going to feel the deeper work. And deep muscles are important for alignment of the spine and providing just the right amount of stress to increase a bit of that bone density to the spinal structure. Now that's well done. With our feet out like this, let's make sure we have a good arch, but push the feet and knees away from each other. We want to engage our outer hips and keep the pelvis right in the center. Pull in the core a bit. As you lift the chest, let the shoulders lower down. Keep the pelvis centered as you tilt to the side. And then take an arm and the chest upward, lifting, stretching, inhale. And then we're going to exhale and lift ourselves completely out. And we'll start that again. We'll press out the legs again, pull in the belly, chest up and shoulders down. Pelvis stays centered as we tilt. And we take the arm up into the stretch. We inhale. And then we exhale. We lift ourselves up all the way out. Now we're going to take ourselves into a wider stance. We're going to be spreading our feet widely apart. And to give ourselves a nice little platform, we're going to bend our knees a little bit and put the heel of the palm high up. We want the hands high so the angle of action goes more toward the spinal structure. We'll bend slowly and gently forward. And on one side, in order to lengthen the spine, we begin to press the heel of the palm and straighten the arm somewhat. Don't worry whether the arm goes completely straight. Just take a deep breath in. And then exhale, let that elbow bend. Now side two, we begin to push to straighten that arm. And we'll take a deep inhale. Exhale, that elbow bends. Now let's get the whole spine. Let's press both sides, straightening enough to feel a gentle stretch. Deep inhale. Exhaling, bend the elbows, bend the knees. We're going to take our hands all the way down and very slowly shifting the weight to one side. Our target is for the inner thigh to stretch. Now, if you don't feel that, you can move the foot a little further away, and your hips could be high or low. Breathe deeply, and now go the other way. We want a gentle stretch to that inner thigh. Deep breathing. And then our first side again, breathing deeply. And our second side, deep breaths. Coming to center, we're going to lift up our hips, but keep enough bend to the knee that you're controlling the stretch you begin to feel in the back of the leg. Let the head and the arms hang comfortably. And you can, if you like, sway the head and the shoulders from side to side, adding a little additional stretch. Now, with one hand staying down in the center, we're going to lift the other shoulder up toward our back for a twist. Press out to the feet to lengthen the spine and breathe. And then we'll do the other side. The hand comes down. The other shoulder lifts up and toward the back. We stretch and we breathe. And now we're going to come to center. And we'll put our hands up on the knees, lifting the chest enough to get those arms straight again. Go slow. Just take your shoulder across. The stretch now, if you have a different angle, will be multiple places. Inner thigh, into the, the pelvis, the low back, the ribs, the shoulder, maybe other places. And then we'll go the other way. We're not trying to be intense. We're just trying to make a gentle enough stretch that will loosen. Keep breathing deeply. And then we do the first side again, reaching across. Inhale so those ribs open up wide. 
Exhale, center and reach across. Inhale, open ribs wide. Exhale, come on to center and bend your knees and bring yourself upright. Okay, now we're going to do some sun salutes. Make sure that you're able to step backward enough for a full, comfortable step back on your mat. And remember that we're going to adapt and modify if anything I'm asking you to do doesn't seem to be right for you. So let's start with a standing position with our feet hip distance wide. We want a good arch in the feet and our hips back, our chest lifting up, our shoulders back and down, our chin level. We're going to breathe in and lift those arms up. And as we begin the exhale, we grab the elbows and bend the knees, bringing the chest down. Maybe elbows stay on the knees and we pull forward. Or maybe we let the head and the arms tilt. The bend of the knees adjusts the stretch that we feel in the back of the leg. More bend, less stretch. If you want head and arms hanging, you can sway your head and shoulders from side to side. Deep breathing. On this exhale, placing hands next to the feet, we step our right foot back and we're moving into lunge position so that the left knee is directly over the ankle, that shin, a perpendicular line. We're going to lift up the right hip and reach back the heel to stretch the calf, but also pull the chest and shoulders forward to lengthen the spine. If you like, use a light pressure on the hands, but if you're seeking more intensity, one or even both arms can reach forward. Take a deep breath, and on the exhale, let the hands flatten evenly, and we'll step back into a plank or knees down tabletop. Let the chest reach forward and the hips and heels reach back to lengthen. Take a deep breath. And on the exhale, let your knees come down soft, hips back toward heels, walk the arms forward till your elbows and even the forehead can rest all the way down, breathing deeply. Now, for additional stretch, we could sway the shoulders and the chest from side to side, loosening up the rib cage and the shoulders, breathing deeply. And now we'll come part way forward with the shoulders right over the elbows. And we'll let our hips sway from side to side, continuing to deeply breathe. Now we're coming forward and into upward dog. The shoulders will travel forward of the wrists. The collarbones lift as we sink the hips. We'll put an even pressure into the hands and the top of the foot. Pull up the collarbones and inhale. And then exhaling, we're moving back to downward dog. So bend those knees. Press feet, lift hips, and push your chest steadily toward your thighs. We want an even pressure in the palm of our hand, fingertips and knuckles, and the thumb lightly pulling toward the feet. Head between the arms. We're going to balance our weight across the ball of the foot, lifting up the heels, bending our knees, lifting hips, and keep pushing chest toward the thighs. And if you like, you can paddle one heel down at a time to increase the stretch you're feeling in the calf and the back of the leg. Breathe deeply. On this exhale, we're stepping our right foot forward back in the lunge. It's okay to bring the left knee down first if you need to adjust the right leg. Shin perpendicular. And we're going to lift up the left hip, reach the heel back for stretch, pull chest and shoulders forward, and the right foot holds its arch. We'll use light pressure on the hands, or if we want intensity, one or both arms can reach forward. Deep inhale, and then we exhale and step forward our feet hip distance. Now press those heels, pull your belly tight. And from the squatting position, we inhale up and we exhale. Good, let's do another round. Inhale up, exhale and grab the elbows and bend the knees, chest coming down. And this time, the elbows will go forward of the shins. The palms will fold, the head will rest. It's like a skier stance. Press the arms into the legs. Moving your ribs toward your knees will lengthen your spine. Pull the shoulders toward your hips. Release tension from your neck. Press your feet and your knees outward, engaging your outer hips and stabilizing. Breathe deeply into your upper back. Exhaling now, placing hands. It's left foot stepping back. Now this lunge, we're going to make our side angle. So let the left heel go down and the left shoulder lift up and the right elbow come up and on your knee. But we want to move both of our hips more toward the middle of the mat, and we want to move our right knee toward the right edge to engage that right hip. Lengthen through that right side, taking the shoulder away from the hip, and feel the arches of both foot. That left foot, little toe to heel edge, should be pressing the floor evenly. 
If you want more, you can bring the left arm behind your back to lift your shoulder higher. And if you'd like more intensity, you can just take that right arm forward. Deep breath in, and then exhale. We're gonna step back into a plank or tabletop. Hands pressing evenly, stepping back, and chest going forward, hips and heels back. Inhale, and then exhaling, softly lower down the knees. Hips back toward the heels, elbows and forehead down. But now let's stretch a little more. We're going to walk our right hand a bit more forward and place the palm flat. Sway your ribs over to the right. We want to stretch. We want to bow the ribs outward. In every breath, we want to breathe to our right side. You'll feel the stretch increase as your ribs move, and that is stretching some structure of the rib cage itself. But it's also making the lungs inflate more, and that's going to help us taking those deep breaths. Now exhaling, chest to center, hands even. Now it's the left hand. We walk it forward and place the palm flat. We're going to sway the ribs to the left and pull gently back. We're going to breathe to the left side. Every breath is going to make us feel the ribs stretch. And every breath, as we focus the breathing, we're going to inflate the lungs more. Exhaling, chest to center and hands even. Now we'll slowly come forward to upward dog, those shoulders traveling forward of the wrist. We lift collarbones as we sink down the hips, hand and foot pressure even, lift collarbones and inhale. And then exhale, moving back to downward dog. Lift the hips and push the chest toward the thighs, letting the knees bend and the head come between the arms. Palm pressure even, thumbs gently pulling toward the feet. And we're going to activate those shoulders. We take those shoulders and move them toward the hips to make our lat muscles engage. We push our hands and elbows toward each other to let pectoral muscles contract. And then we make it wide between our shoulder blades and that brings in the muscle known as serratus anterior. These muscle groups stabilize our shoulders. So let's lift our hips. And if you like, you can paddle those heels up and down, breathing deeply. And on this exhale, we're stepping our left foot forward. It's into lunge, putting the ankle under the knee. And from the lunge, side ankle. Right heel goes down, right shoulder lifts up, left elbow comes up and on the knee. In this position, let's move our hips to the center of the mat and left knee moving toward the left edge. We'll increase length by moving shoulder away from the hip. We let the right foot, little toe heel edge remain pressed to the floor. If we want the intensity, the right arm can go behind the back to lift the shoulder. And if we want more, we can let that left arm go forward. Take a deep breath. And then we'll exhale and step forward, feet hip distance. Now press those heels down, belly tight, and bend those knees, inhaling up from the squat. And exhale. One more round. Inhale up. Exhale and grab the elbows, bend the knees, chest coming down. Now, Get your head and shoulders comfortable, the knees slightly bent, and focus on your feet. Create the arch, lift your toes, and steadily press your legs away from each other. We want to engage the outer hip action as if we're stretching the mat apart between our feet. Head and arms can completely hang, and this is going to help us decrease the pressure within the structure of the pelvis and reshape it to what's more optimal. Take one more deep breath. And then exhaling, relax, place hands, and we'll step our right foot back, but we're gonna bring the right knee all the way to the floor into a low lunge, and let the top of the foot rest down. We're turning this into a twist. So put even pressure on your right hand, left hand to the knee. Now, if you wanted to twist straight across, you could. Or, for more intensity, lift the hips first, twist, and then sink the hips comfortably down. Tighten up your right seat muscle, lengthen the right side, breathe into the right side deeply. And then on exhale, we place our hands and back in the plank or tabletop. Chest reaching forward, hips and heels back, inhale. Exhaling softly, lower down the knees. Hips back toward heels, elbows and forehead down. Now push your palms flat. Lift up your elbows and you can squeeze your shoulder blades together. That's the muscle, the rhomboids, the between the shoulder blade muscles. Breathing deeply. And then we're going to put our elbows down. We're going to press them down firmly and lift the space between the shoulder blades. That's serratus anterior muscle. Breathing deeply. And then exhale, coming forward now to upward dog. Shoulders traveling forward of the wrist. We lift the collarbones as we sink the hips. Hand and foot pressure even. Collarbones lifting. Inhale. 
and then exhale back, downward dog. Lift hips and push your chest toward your thighs, palms evenly flat, thumbs gently pull, pulling toward the feet, head between the arms, get the balance on the ball of the foot, lift the heels and bend your knees, lift your hips and keep pushing your chest toward your thighs. We're gonna pull the shoulders toward hips, press hands and elbows toward each other, make it wide between the shoulder blades. And if you like more action, Shift some weight to the left foot, either lift the right foot up or perhaps stretch the right leg all the way upward, breathing deeply. And then we'll bring our right foot down, shifting weight to the right, maybe just lifting the left foot or stretching the left leg all the way up. Deep breath. And then the left foot comes down. Now we're going to step right foot forward and bring the left knee all the way down. Let the top of the left foot rest and then we'll twist. It's even pressure, left hand, right hand to the knee. Either twist straight across or lift the hips, twist, and let the hips sink comfortably low. Tighten the left seat muscle, lengthen the left side, breathe into the left side deeply. And then exhale and we'll step forward, feet hip distance. Press down those heels, bend those knees with belly tight, inhaling up from the squat. And exhale. Very good. Now let's step, let's stretch our spine just a little bit more. Let's have those feet wide apart again. I want to bend the knees slightly, lift the chest and shoulders up until the heel of the palm is high in the crease line. We bend forward and on the right side, as we press the arm, we may find that there's a little bit more straightness, a little bit more length potential. So take a deep breath, exhale that elbow bends and then the left side, we push we let that arm become straight. We take a deep inhale. Exhale, the elbow bends, and now both sides. As we press, we work to lengthen the spine. Once again, inhale, and then exhale, bend the elbows and the knees and come up out of that. Good. Now we're gonna do one more standing pose for now because this is a really good one to stretch the shoulder and to stretch the back. And it's a modification of our triangle pose and so what I'd like us to do is be in a position where we are, we're standing with the feet hip distance wide. And we're going to step our right foot backward. It doesn't have to go very far back. I don't want to put one foot directly behind the other. I want to use up some of the width of my mat and not just the length of it. And so let's stand with a good arch in our feet. And we're going to tighten up our thighs and pull in our core. Our first goal is to stretch the hamstring on that left leg. So lift up your chest, thighs tight, and bend slowly and gently forward. You'll begin to feel the stretch in the back of the leg, and you limit that to where you can continue to lengthen the front and back of your spine. So don't overstretch, just keep it comfortable. Now once we've got a bit of a stretch and we're continuing to lengthen, we're going to change this, we're going to adapt and modify. So let's bend our left knee and bring the left elbow down onto the knee lengthening by pulling forward, but we're going to take our right arm and stretch it back behind us. And then we're going to take the arm and we're going to stretch it out away from us until it's completely forward. And then we're going to point it down toward the floor, still stretching. And we're going to point it backward again. And then out to the side and down. But now we're going to reverse. We're going to point forward and out to the side and back and down and we'll do that again forward out to the side and back and down and then as we're down we're just going to let the arm sort of circle a little bit and then we're going to lift our shoulder and our chest upward and if comfortable with the arm stretch it up you can look downward or outward Lift the side of the chest, stretch and breathe. And then with the exhale, we let the arm point back and then swing forward. We'll do this again. We'll lift the chest and the shoulder and the rib cage up. The arm could reach up. We inhale. And then exhale, pointing back, we swing. And one more time. We lift the chest, the shoulder up. We stretch, we inhale. And then exhale, we swing. Now we're going to come out by bending the back leg and using hands to the leg to bring ourselves upright. 
and then we're going to do this on side two. So we stand again with our feet hip distance. And this time it's the left foot. We step back. Remember, we don't want one foot right behind the other like a tight rope. We want to use up the width of our mat. And we're going to tighten our thighs to help release our hamstrings, engage our core to lengthen the spine. We lift and we bend a bit forward. And the sensation of one leg might be very different than the other. So give in to the, the tightness. Don't overwhelm yourself. Keep lengthening the front of the body. And when you felt the stretch and you created the length, this exhale, we're just going to bend our right knee, bring our right elbow down to the knee. And then we point our left arm backward. And then we go out into our room and forward and then down. And we make that stretch back again and then out again. You want to feel a gentle stretch in all the movements. But of course, you're adapting to what your body needs. Now we've done that. We're going to go the other direction, coming to point forward and out, back, and then we do it again. Good. And then the arm's just going to hang a little bit. Now we're going to lift up the shoulder and the chest, and if comfortable, the arm will stretch up looking down or out to the side, ribcage lifting, inhaling. And then as we exhale, we let the arm pull back and then swing a bit forward. And we do that again. We lift up the shoulder and the chest. We can stretch the arm upward, inhale, and then exhale, point back and swing the arm forward. And again, the rib cage, the chest, the arm, stretch up, we inhale, and then exhale, swing. And now we're gonna bend the back leg to help us come out. We're gonna lift ourselves up. Good job. All right, let's, uh, let's come in to a seated position. So as we come down and we sit, we're going to be sitting with our feet wide. And it's hard to sit without being on our tailbone. So adjust yourself down into a seated position. At this moment, we don't need anything to sit our hips up on because we're going to be going into a twist and a few other actions for the body. So you can put your hands back behind you to help you lengthen and come off the, the tailbone and onto the sitting bone. And we're going to be making some movements with our upper and our lower body. Right now with our knees bent, see if you can reach your right knee a little forward of your left knee. It'll sort of, you'll come off that side, that sitting bone, and you'll reach a bit forward. And then you'll relax. And then your left side, you'll reach it a bit forward and then you'll relax. And then we'll do it again. Forward reach and relax. Forward reach and relax. Okay. Now let's let our legs tilt. I'm going to the left. And as I do, the outside of the left leg comes down and the inside of my right leg comes down. And my legs form a zigzag pattern where my left foot is touching the top of the right thigh region. Now in this position, all of my weight is on the left and we can readjust to get ourselves centered on that left hip. The left knee down, I'm going to help that by putting my right hand on that left knee and leaning a bit to help it come down, but you stay comfortable. Now in this position, our left hand is brought behind us to pull us a little bit long and we're going to stretch our shoulder. We're going to take our right shoulder and swing it into the twist toward the left, take a breath. And then we let that relax. We'll do it again. We'll swing into the twist, inhaling. Exhaling, we relax. And once again, into our twist. And we relax. Now we're going to keep our shoulder and chest still. And we're going to move this right side of our pelvis. To do that, we're going to pull the pelvis gently backward and forward. It might not move very much at first. We'll try again. Backward and forward. And then once again, backward and forward. Now let's try both upper and lower body at the same time. 
For this, as I begin to reach my right shoulder into the twist, I pull the right side of my pelvis back, creating greater length between the two points of shoulder and pelvis. We let that relax. We'll do it again. The shoulder moves one direction, the hip pulls back the opposite way. We inhale, exhale, we relax, and we'll do it again. Pulling shoulder and hip back, and we relax. Good. Now let's go a little further with this, have a bit of fun. We're going to take our hands onto the mat and spread them comfortably wide. We're going to angle our elbows outward a bit so they flare out to the side. And we're going to move our hands a little further away. We're going to pull toward our fingers and we're going to roll on the left hip, lifting our legs up into a twisted push-up. We're going to push our hands toward the middle and push ourselves back upright. So we pull our body toward our fingertips and we push our hands toward the middle. You're going to feel more action on the left shoulder than the right. We'll do it again. Into our twisted push up, down and up. Doing a comfortable number of repetitions, going only as low as you're comfortable with. Good job. Okay, nicely done. Let's walk our hands back toward our body and we're going to come in up and we're going to sit and we're going to repeat all these actions on the second side. So first things first, as we sit, feet and knees are wide apart and we're going to use our, our hands help to position us on our sitting bones, not on our tailbone. We lengthen. Now let's see, can we move the structure? I'm going to lean a little to the right, move my left knee a little forward and then back in position. Leaning a bit to the left, I'm going to move my right knee forward and back into position. Do that again, just teaching our body how to move the pelvis. And then the other side. Good. Now, long spine, let's let our legs go to the right. So down they go, outside of the right leg coming down, inside of the left leg coming down. The legs form this zigzag pattern, and we're going to make sure the weight is resting on that right leg more. In fact, putting the left hand on the right knee and you adjust to your comfort. Now, right hand is behind us to pull us a little to the right to keep the spine long. And we're gonna take our left shoulder and we're gonna reach it into our stretch, inhaling. And we exhale, we let it go. So you just measure this into your comfort. We do it again, reaching, inhale, exhale, release. <laughs> And again, shoulder reach, inhale, exhale, release. Now let's try this with just the left side of the pelvis. To keep the shoulder still, we pull the pelvis backward gently and we move it forward. It might be different one side versus the other side. Again, back and forward. And once again, back and forward forward. Now let's see if we can get the shoulder and the hip to move in different directions. So as we lean to the right, we take that left shoulder, we move it forward, but we pull the left side of the pelvis gently backward, creating length between the shoulder and the pelvis. Exhale, we relax, and we do it again. Shoulder moves one direction, pelvis moves the opposite. We relax, and once again, Shoulder movement, pelvis movement, inhaling, exhaling, we relax. Now we're going to reposition the hands. We're going to bring them so that they're behind us, wide, and elbows flare. We're going to walk the hands a little further away. So we have to pull toward our fingertips. That rolls us on to the right leg. And then we push our palms toward each other to bring ourselves back up, our twisted push-up. We'll do it again, pulling forward and hands pushing back. Again, forward and back. Comfortable number of times, you decide how deeply you go. Breathing. And so we'll feel that more on the right side. Great, okay, nicely done. Now, let's come up Let's sit. Now, you can sit directly on the floor. 
But if you have a bolster or a block, or you know, a nice replacement for a bolster is a couch cushion, or even a chair, we're gonna sit and do a little bit of shoulder stretch before we go further. So I want you to find a comfortable position. And your legs could be in a variety of positions. Some people have their legs forward or out to the side. Some people hold just the ankle area and other people will uh, fold the legs. I like to bring my knees down a little bit and, and I want you to stay comfortable. And if the first position you choose gets a little bit stale after a while, that's okay. You're just going to uh, switch to another position. So let's find a comfortable seated position that we can maintain for a moment or two and let's stretch these shoulders just a little bit more. So we had a nice activation of the front of the chest, the pectoral area. Let's activate a lot of the other muscles by rolling. We're gonna roll the shoulders forward and up. We're gonna roll the shoulders back and then down. So big swirling, rolling movements. And you will begin to feel a lot of muscle areas responding to the action. So we roll one way. And now we're gonna roll the opposite, back and up, forward and down. So big swirling movements. Good. Now let's try that one arm in one direction at a time. So forward and then forward. So we're making a movement and this separates out the shoulders, gives us a little bit greater action. We'll roll the other way with that. And that's nicely loosened some things up. But let's loosen some more. Let's bring a hand across to the shoulder. And using our other hand for support, we're gonna make a circle. We're gonna make a big circle. We go across and we go up and out and down. And so it's as big of a circle as is comfortable. You've got some nice support from your other hand. You may notice some edges that you don't wanna go into and that's fine. We circle one way and now we're gonna circle the opposite direction, stretching into our shoulders as we breathe deeply. Good. Let's warm up the other side too. So now this hand goes to the shoulder, the other hand supports the elbow. And we begin to make a circling action. Breathing deeply. And then we're gonna circle the other way. Good. Now, let's go back to that first side, hand to the shoulder. There's an action I'd like us to do, which is to lift the elbow up. It'll go a certain amount, but we'll take the other hand, and now I'd like us to stretch that arm upward. Deep breath, we'll let it go. Now we're gonna lower the shoulder down, but we'll take the other hand and assist by stretching the shoulder down. You'll feel a little bit more stretch with that. We let it go. Again, the elbow comes up. We're gonna stretch our arm up, relaxing that. The elbow lowers, we're gonna stretch down. Once more. Lift the elbow, stretch up, let it go. Lower the elbow, stretch down. Great. Let's do the other side, hand to the shoulder. It might be different. We'll lift the elbow and then we will stretch it upward. Then we'll let the elbow lower and we'll stretch it downward. Again, lift and Stretch, Oops, my arm. <laughs> lower and stretch. All right, one more time. Lift, stretch it up, and lower and stretch it down. Well, that's good. And now we want to target, we did the push-ups, we had some nice action in the pecs that opened up the back of the chest, but let's open up the front of the chest. Let's take an arm, I'm gonna start it on one side in the back. We're gonna swing it across to the other side. We're gonna bring it up into our rib cage and around, and it may be very tight, so don't do anything that's gonna make you feel unpleasant with that action, but we make a nice little circle in our back in one direction, and then we circle our arm in the back in the other direction. As big of a circle as comfortable, sort of circling the center of the back. Now place the hand, the back of your hand, in the center of your back. I'm gonna lift up the chest, lower down the shoulder, and then swing the elbow backward, trying to bring the hand further across to the other side. Now, everyone's different. Some people will be doing good to keep the hand in the center of the back. 
other people might be able to take their hand and touch the other palm. And some people are flexible enough, they can pull a little bit more slack. We're not trying for anything grand or extreme. Pull the chest up again, lower the shoulder down and swing the elbow back. Now, with your head, lift it up high and very gently lean your head one way. Don't go too far, take a deep breath. As you exhale, lift your head back up again and now very gently lean your head the other way. And take a deep breath. And then exhaling, we're gonna let the arm completely relax and the arm's gonna feel like it's way behind the other side. And we have some. So now let's do the other arm. The hand starts on one side, we swing it across to the other, up and to the ribs, and back around. And we do that again. Now we'll swing it the other way. Good. Now we'll place our hand in the center of our back. We're going to lift the chest, lower down the shoulder, and see if we can swing that elbow further back. See if we can slide the hand any further to the other side. We can let our hand touch the other hand. If we can pull some slack out, but gentle everything. And chest up and shoulders down, we'll swing that elbow back again. We're going to lift our head and very gently tilt it in one direction. Deep breath. Exhale, lifting the head up, tilt it the other way. Deep breath. Exhale and we let it all relax. Good. We'll loosen a little bit more back and forth movements. Very slight, very gentle, just to loosen up the rib cage. Because we're going to come into a new position now. We're going to be reclining on one side or the other. So you want some length, about the length of your mat for your body to recline on. And you may want to use a pillow for the head. So let's switch positions now to be on our side. So as we're on our side, you can use a bolster if you like. We're going to be placing ourselves where shoulder is over shoulder, knee over knee. And that makes the back of the pelvis and the back of the shoulders nicely aligned. So once you're onto your side and you have your knees lined up with each other, we're going to straighten the upper leg and just reach it away from us. And then we're going to bring the upper knee toward our chest and I want us to grab hold either at the knee or shin or ankle and pull that knee in toward the chest, but be gentle. Now hold somewhere at the ankle, shin or knee and let the leg begin to go backward, keeping the knee bent and the heel as close to your seat muscle as you're comfortable with. The more your leg goes backward, the more you're going to feel a stretch here in the front of your thigh. Keep that lower knee on the floor. Don't let it lift. Keep it pressed down. And then we take the leg forward again, stretching it forward and pulling it back. We're loosening up a bit. And again, we go forward and we go back. Now, release the leg and try to bring the leg forward, holding it up on its own. Keep it level as you bring it back and then let it stretch. Bring the leg forward and let it stretch and back and let it straighten at the knee and stretch. Again, we're starting to feel some fatigue probably in the back of the hip, so you could stop any time you wanted. We're going to do this in sections. Good. And then we're going to let our knees touch each other. Okay, good. So the outer hip got a nice warm up, but our goal was to get our glute muscles slightly more in the back of the seat muscle area. So to do that, we're going to create an angle. I'm going to start the angle by rotating my hip in. My foot will be higher than my hip right now. I'm going to send this foot backward at that 45 degree angle. So now we send it back and up and oh, we feel it in the seat muscle. We come down knee touching. And again, back it goes and down. <laughs> Keep it gentle. We'll do it again. I hear some screams. There we go. And once again. Good. Okay, you can keep going or you can let it rest. And we're going to loosen up our shoulder a bit because we're going to create a nice unified action. So first, I want us to lean our shoulder back a little bit, just experiencing a stretch like we're reaching for something behind us. And then we're going to take our arm forward like we're reaching for something low forward of us. We're 
we'll try that again. We'll pull our arm back and we'll reach our arm forward. But now this time, as the arm goes back, we're going to add the leg action in. We're going to pull the arm back and bring the leg forward. And then we're going to reach our arm forward and pull the leg back and as high up as you're comfortable. It's like we're running on our side here. Back. There we are. The outer hip's going to get tired, but the body's in a nice twisting action. Well done. Okay. That's nice. Let's do side two. So come up, switch sides. Often better to change what position your head is in so you can still face the, the camera and see what's going on. So let's get on to side two where the head is comfortably resting, shoulders comfortable, knees lined up. And as soon as you're ready, you begin to take the leg towards you, but you pull it in gently. And then holding somewhere knee, shin, or ankle, you stretch gently. So we go back and forth with that. Could be much tighter one side versus the other, so adapt to that tightness. Just limit your actions, modify around what your body needs you to do one side versus the other side. We're loosening up. Now I'm going to let go of the leg and let it do a few of these on its own. We're asking the outer hip to work, keeping the leg pretty much level to the floor as we go forward and back. Then we'll go back a little straighter and forward a little straightening. Back and forth slowly, breathing. Good. We'll let the knees rest on the knees. Sometimes one hip gets tired a lot faster than the other side. But as soon as you're ready, we're going to inwardly rotate the foot higher than the hip and knee right now. And we're going to send that leg back and up to get the glute active. And then have the knee come to the knee. And we do it again. Back and up. And then down. And again. Comfortable number of times. Good. Now, let's loosen up the shoulders. We're going to take our shoulder, we're going to roll back and reach the arm back. And then we're going to bring the shoulder forward and stretch the arm forward. And we do it again. Chest back, arm stretching back. And then forward. But now the next time the arm goes back, let's bring our leg forward. And when the arm goes forward, we're going to take our leg backward and upward. So we're in that sideways run again, back and forth. It's okay to feel fatigue, but you limit your actions to what seem the very best for you. It's a nice way to loosen up, get some movement that we might have been missing. Nicely done. Knee to knee again. And let's roll onto our back. Now, I don't want to use a big pillow in this position. What I'd like to do is to come onto my back, and maybe a shallow pillow or a roll of the mat might be enough to make our neck comfortable. But we're going to have our feet down, knees and feet hip distance wide. We're going to separate our feet a little wider on the mat and spread our arms out. And we're going to do some nice finishing twists. Very slowly, we're going to rock our legs to the right side. And when we do, it causes the legs to fold to lift the left side of the pelvis up a little higher. Our shoulders stay down. And then we bring our knees up and tilt our knees to the left, allowing the right side of the pelvis to lift. We'll go back and forth a few times like this. Back and forth slowly. And it's a limited and comfortable twist. But we can do another twist. Let's bring our feet and knees close together. 
just with the closeness of the legs when we go back and forth, it moves the pelvis more. And if we keep our shoulders down, it'll add more stretch. But remember, do the twist that seems the most comfortable to you. And if you want even more at center, we can drape one leg over the other and rock slowly side to side. switch the leg when we're ready to do the other side. And that's good. Now, uncross the legs and stretch your legs out completely. Sometimes it feels really nice just to turn the hips in and out and loosen the hips a bit. But we're also going to do what I call a shimmy. We're going to reach the right side longer by moving the ankle away from the shoulder. And then we'll do that with the left side, a little bit of reach. So we shimmy the pelvis back and forth, and that moves the structure of the pelvis in a way that helps release some tension out of that lower joint called the sacroiliac joint. Relaxing that, we're going to tighten up our seat muscles. We'll feel the pelvis react, and then we'll relax. And we could do it one side and then the other, or both at the same time. And if we turn our hips in, we're going to find that the body reacts differently. The seat muscle is a little less likely to activate with the inward turned hip. Let that relax, and then walk your shoulders away from your head. Create more distance between neck and shoulder. Turn the arms, the inside of the elbows and palms can face up to release more tension and broaden through the back of the shoulder. You can make a little bit of a circle with your chin one way, and then circle your chin the other way. At center, we can tuck our chin and arch our neck. Finally, positioning the chin so it's pointed straight up. As you inhale, make a brief tightness through arms and legs. And as you exhale, go limp and remain relaxing on your back. But start a breath that begins in your belly. Try and fill up the belly breath as much as you can until your clothes seem to stretch. And then exhale that breath slowly outward. Another breath, you'll start at the side of your chest, trying to take that up toward your underarm region and then exhaling slowly. Then see if you could take another breath into that lower and upper back region, exhaling slowly, and then into just the collarbone region as you exhale slowly. Each breath over and over again Deep inhales and slow exhales, working to breathe as deeply as you can, over and over and over again. Let your body, with each exhale, relax and go limp. Let your mind focus on the moment. Let yourself hear the sounds around you. Let yourself feel the weight of your head and your feet, your shoulders and hips and your arms and your legs and your chest, your whole body comfortably resting. Feel the breath in the belly, in the sides, lower back, upper back, shoulder blades, collarbones. Exhale, going limp and relax. Now you may remain like this as long as you like. And whenever you're ready, you can begin 
to stretch just a little bit more. Moving fingers and toes. As you slowly begin to stretch and move, you'll decide when you want to come upright. And once you're seated comfortably, if it turns out there's some questions you have or aches or pains you have, this is an excellent time for them. 